everybody, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, the home of Healthy Delicious. Wishing you a very wonderful day wherever you are in the world and whatever it is that you may be doing, I hope that you are well and I hope that you are safe as well. Thank you for joining me on this, the last episode of our nut-free, school-friendly, healthy treats cooking class. This is the last one and I have saved what I believe is the best for last. So on today's class, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make what I have named the Cheese Louise. Now these are nut-free, gluten-free, sugar-free, and also grain-free crackers, cheese crackers, obviously not dairy-free because we are actually using cheese, but you need to keep on watching because I am about to share with you some absolutely jaw-dropping health benefits of consuming certain cheeses. So for any cheese lovers out there, well, it definitely made my day when I learned these, um, these amazing facts, but I'm sure it's gonna make your day as well. So yes, we are making cheese crackers. Quite, they're quite easy to make, doesn't take too long, but as I said, keep watching because I have some awesome, awesome news for all the cheese lovers out there. So let's get into the recipe. Why don't you come on down and join me on the bench here and let's take a look at these uh, Cheese Louise crackers. So, like I said, really simple, nothing too major. You can see I've got a selection of cheeses in front of me. And yes, I do have my cooktop set up as well because we are gonna do a little bit of cooking when it comes to our cheese. So I have um, the cheeses already pre-grated here on my, on my little tray. And I will discuss with you which types of cheeses I've got in front of me, but I've actually got three, would you believe? I'll, I'll put them a little closer. And you can see that we've got um, um, Parmesan cheese or Parmigiano Reggiano down this end. In the middle there, I have, um, this is cheddar cheese, so just your classic hard cheddar. And then down this end, I have some Gouda. So I'll explain to you why I have chosen those three cheeses. It's not just for flavor, it also has a lot to do with the health benefits of these three particular cheeses. So I have 180 grams in total, which is just over six ounces of cheese. I'm gonna pop that straight into my little cooktop and I'm turning it on and I'm turning it on to medium to low. If you are not sure what medium to low is, I suggest you start actually on low on the lowest possible temperature setting that you can get your cooktop or your stove onto because the last thing we want to do is obviously burn the cheese. What we're trying to do is we're trying to melt it. So give it a bit of a stir because remember you do have three types of cheeses in there. And the three types of cheeses that I have, as I was saying, the first one that I um that I have in, that I have on my board here is some gouda. So I'm using gouda, which is your classic um, hard cheese. It is a Dutch style cheese and this that you see here around there that's just the wax that they put on to protect the cheese as it's maturing so i'm using three hard cheeses gouda was one of them the other one was a really good quality parmesan or parmigiano reggiano cheese which is our italian hard cheese it has been aged usually for a minimum of 18 months this is a really delicious delicious cheese and then i have some classic cheddar um, the, the English style cheddar, once again, it's quite a sharp cheese. And our kids reckon that these cheese crackers, these cheese crackers, they have told me they taste exactly like the cheddar flavored um, snacks crackers. <laughs> if anyone knows the snacks line of crackers, our kids reckon they taste exactly like those cheddar cheese uh, flavored ones. So I don't know whether that's a compliment <laughs> or what, but that's uh, one good way to make sure that your kids are gonna love these. If they like the shapes crackers, they're gonna love these particular um, crackers as well. So I'm just stirring that every now and then, just sort of seeing what's happening on in there. Now the reason why I said I have jaw-dropping information when it comes, um, comes to share with you guys about the health benefits of cheese. Um, and jaw-dropping, by the way, are not my words. Those words are from Dr. William Lee, whose book, Eat to Beat, disease is a New York Times bestseller. Now he is a well respected medical doctor and he's also the founder of the Angiogenesis Foundation. Now that that basically um, is, a, is a group of scientists and doctors, medical doctors, that literally are looking at how you can fend off disease um, by your diet. So um, 
the Angiogenesis Foundation is, is founded by, by Dr. William Lee and he's written this amazing book and he talks about, you know, among other things, how cheese is good for us and the che which cheeses that you need to eat in particular. So, he advocates, based on numerous scientific studies, that the inclusion of cheese in your diet will not only help to create a healthy gut microbiome, and you know me, I'm all about the healthy gut microbiome, but it will also help to reduce certain diseases like heart attacks and even certain cancers. I mean, cheese lovers, it's time for us to rejoice, quite frankly, but there are a couple, you know, a couple reasons why. So the cheeses that I have in front of me, um, they're very high, these hard cheeses are very high in vitamin K2. And that is found in certain cheeses, and it's usually the hard cheeses like Edam, um, Emmentaler, um, Gouda, which I'm using here today. And it's that vitamin K2 which is going to help to, you know, fend off heart disease and, as I was saying, even some certain cancers. But then you have cheeses like our Parmesan cheese here, um, which is another hard cheese, and cheddar as well. Now, these two cheeses in particular are really good for supporting a healthy gut microbiome. So these, if you include these cheeses, Parmesan and um, cheddar, into your diet, you'll be helping to feed your healthy gut microbiome. But, and there's always a but, I'm not advocating that you go out and you literally eat your weight in cheese. <laughs> that's, that's not a good idea. Because cheese as well, we must be also mindful that cheese um, has um, saturated fat in it and it can have quite high levels of sodium as well. So I'm not suggesting at all that you go out and you go, yay, gonna feed my microbiome and then you literally, you know, eat a block of cheese. The, um, what especially Dr. William Lee is advocating is that yes, you can incorporate these hard cheeses into your diet, like Edam and Gouda and cheddar and Parmesan into your diet. Make sure you're choosing a really, you know, the best quality cheeses that your money can buy for a start. Like this is a Gouda from Holland. This is from the Netherlands. This is a Parmigiano Reggiano from Italy. It is the best quality. I just adore this cheese. And then I have a really good quality cheddar um, from the UK as well. So you need to choose a cheese, um, best quality that your budget will allow, and then you want to consume no more than two to three slices, and by slices I mean thin slices, like you would normally get a processed cheese slice, two to three slices a day. But that's still great news for cheese lovers. Still great news. So um, let's have a look at what's happening in here. Like I'm so excited by the fact that we can, you know, we can eat cheese and we know we know why now. We know why we can eat cheese, and it's the um, it's what happens when cheese is made. It's the um, it's the bacteria, the healthy bacteria they put into the cheese to create, you know, these hard blocks of cheese. It's that bacteria, and it's the byproducts that comes off that bacteria that creates this vitamin K2 or um, a healthy gut microbiome. Yes, we've got a question, Mahi. Question from Amy, could you melt the cheese in the microwave? Uh, yes, you can melt the cheese in the microwave. That was a great question. Um, if you want to melt the cheese in the microwave, you need to put it obviously into a microwavable bowl, something like that, and do it at 30 uh, second increments on high. Stir in between, depending on your microwave, that could take two minutes to possibly three minutes. But what you're looking for, as you can see, is you can see I'm, I'm literally, it's almost like I'm starting to make fondue. Ha! Cheese fondue. So I know, exciting cheese news for all of us. But just remember, moderation is the key to anything. And um, also, it's what type of cheese that you choose. Oh, here's an interesting point I forgot to mention. I've just turned it up to medium to low now. I started off on low, now I've gone up to medium to low because I reckon we can just get there a little bit faster. But you definitely don't want to go any higher than medium to low. My cheese is just starting to kind of bubble away in there, but it's that melted quality that I am looking for without it burning. So that's why I'm standing here and I'm stirring. So um, there is some actually, I, I know I've talked about hard cheeses, but there is, believe it or not, and this is going to um, be very good news for people who like soft cheeses, which is another type of cheese category. And our soft cheeses tend to be things like camembert and brie. Now studies have also shown that um, the bacteria used in the production of camembert is also quite beneficial for our healthy gut microbiome. So if you like your soft cheeses, I would suggest just to look after your health that little bit more that you choose a camembert cheese over other soft cheeses 
because that too is going to help to feed your healthy gut microbiome. But remember again, moderation is key. Moderation is key. So you see what I have here now? Hey, this is starting to get exciting. And of course it smells like a melty cheese shop in my kitchen right now, which is always very exciting. So this is what you're after. This type of softness, as you can see. Now, the reason I grated the cheese is so that they would all melt at the same speed, but Parmesan um, does take just a little bit longer than the other two cheeses, because it's just a little bit harder. It's a little bit more well-aged. So um, I'm just making sure that, you know, most of the cheese is melted and I've got this like blob and blob is important. Oh, there it goes, off the spoon, yes. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna turn up the cooktop now. Taking up a bowl, what you wanna do now is you wanna transfer your melted cheese into a bowl. I got another question, Mahi? Can you just repeat the three cheeses you use? Ah, okay, three cheeses that I use in total. Great question. In total, I used 180 grams, which was six ounces. It's up to you how you decide what amounts of cheese you're going to use of each. For example, um, I, used, um, I used more cheddar in mine than I did of the Parmesan, only because the cheddar's a lot cheaper than the Parmesan, and I just want to reserve that because that's my favorite cheese. But it's also a lot sharper than the Parmesan cheese. So, um, sorry, it's a lot, it's not as sharp as the Parmesan. So if you're making this for kids, I would suggest you probably go lean towards more of the Gouda, which is a mild cheese. Uh, and the cheddar and lesser amounts of the parmesan only because that's more of a grown-up flavor as we know if it's for you and you're making it you know you're a grown-up then you decide what um you know what quantities of each cheese that you put in but for kids you want to go more mild um for adults definitely go a little bit harder with the parmesan so 180 grams in total as i said which is six just over six ounces you decide how much of each all right i want to work this um, before it cools down too much so you want to do this all at the same time next we're going to add in um, a bit of flour and i'm actually using coconut flour Oops, gonna put that down we're gonna use a little bit of coconut flour in here as i said it's gluten free it's also grain free and of course because this has to do with our school friendly nut free wheat there's no nuts in here too so i'm going to add in uh, 30 grams of coconut flour which is one ounce of our coconut flour goes in. I'm also going to add in, and this is to help, not only are we boosting the B vitamins in here because I'm adding nutritional yeast, so I'm adding two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, so I'm increasing the B vitamins, which is really important, but as well as increasing the B vitamins, I'm also increasing the flavor, because as you guys know, and the reason why I love nutritional yeast is it kind of tastes a little bit like parmesan cheese so we're increasing that flavor even more i'm going to add in half a teaspoon of baking powder it's going to go in there as well and what i have in my bowl here is just one egg white so one egg white goes in there that's going to help everything to kind of come together because what you're looking to create now is a dough with your mixture here so it's going to be quite firm and just keep on working it because you want to make sure that you're going to get all of that goodness to come together. You don't want to waste anything, obviously, in here. So keep on working it. This is also a nice opportunity using, you know, really clean hands, obviously. Scrape, scrape down first. Get everything off there. But using really clean hands, you can get involved in here as well and help to create that dough that you want from your wonderful cracker dough oh look at it this is what you're after this is the sort of consistency that you're going to have and how easy it is to make that dough right literally melt the cheese add the dry ingredients add the egg white and then you get this wonderful very pliable very workable dough it's still a little bit warm now that is really important as well because we now need to think about rolling this out. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but my oven is currently set at 145 degrees Celsius, which is 290 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not a hot oven. It's quite a quite a low moderate low moderate oven um, because we don't want obviously our cheese to burn. So I've got my little baking sheet here lined with baking paper. I'm then going to put my ball of dough just down here onto, onto my lined baking sheet. Give it a bit of a squish down just with your hands. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we are going to use a rolling pin 
to roll this dough out now. So, once that's done, take another piece of baking paper, quite a large one, place it on top of your dough, and then all you need to do is to start rolling. I've got my little cutie, cutie baby rolling pin here, and you want to roll the dough out till it's really thin, because we want these crackers to cook evenly, but we also want to get as much bang for our buck from these crackers as well. So, you know, take your time with this step, and get it as thin as possible. When I say as thin as possible, I'm talking like two to three millimeters, which is like, you know, a tenth of an, of an inch. Nothing too major is at all, but it's gonna help not just the crackers to cook evenly, but it's also gonna help to give you more crackers. So as I was saying, take your time here. The top baking paper is there to make it easier to roll out. Look how easy it is to take off. But take your time. And what I also like to do is, is I'll, I'll take this off so you can kind of see what I've got here. It looks like a, you know what? It looks like England a little bit, don't you think? I reckon that looks like England. <laughs> I made a map of England. But I, like I said, I want to I get as much bang for my buck. So I'm going to actually just trim this down a little bit. Just the edges that have kind of just gotten away on me. I'm going to trim it down and kind of glue this together to get uh, more crackers out of it. So that's a nice little tip. You know, if you find that your crackers are going crazy out one side and you quite like the idea of having really even squares of crackers, then my tip is to just cut off the edges, just like I've done, and then you can, what you'll find is you can get a better roll out of them. And they're just more even when you go, when it's time to start to to score or to slice and portion up your crackers. So real thin, remember, two to three millimeters, which as I said, that's paper thin, but means we get more crackers and they cook nice and evenly. So good stuff, happy with that. Let's have a look what's going on now. All right, that is looking pretty good. You can see what we have here. And as I was saying before, now it's time to score the crackers. So using a sharp knife, and it's up to you the size that you make. I tend to like to just cut off the scraggly bits, just so I get more of a square with my crackers, but that's up to you. If you want rustic crackers, you don't have to go for shapes at all. You could literally just, you know, score it quite, quite loosely. Um, and then crack them into shapes, into random shapes once they come out of the oven. So, but I'm going to make squares today, so I'm just going to score through um, to make the crackers all pretty much the same shape and size. I say pretty much because I'm doing this without a guide, but that's okay. And once again, we just go this way with our crackers, and scoring means that you're cutting through, but obviously you're not cutting through the paper. So you're creating the ability that once these crackers come out of the oven, you're able to snap them into pieces. So once we're at this stage, I've got here just a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and I'm going to just lightly brush the olive oil on top. There's probably not even, there's like half a tablespoon, if that, you know, a couple of teaspoons of olive oil. You don't need to have a, be, have a heavy hand here. In fact, the lighter the touch, the better. What's gonna happen with the olive oil is it's not only gonna give it just a lovely bit of flavor, but the olive oil is also gonna help the crackers to brown up nice and evenly. So brush the olive oil on there, and then I've got a little bit of salt. And the salt that I'm using today, I know I normally use the pink salt, but the salt that I'm using today is another mineral salt. And it's actually um, more flaky, more, um, more closer if you recognize the, the name Molden salt, which is a, a British salt, and it's got lovely flakes. And so I'm using this flaky salt because I just want to have that wonderful look of just a few salt grains <laughs> on top of the crackers once they've cooked. And you just want to do a really light sprinkle of your salt on top. Like I said, if you've got flaky salt, kind of looks cool. This salt actually I got, would you believe, um, from France. The last time I was in France, I bought back salt. Yeah, I know, weirdo, <laughs> but why not? I bought back salt. So that has now been done. We are now gonna pop that into the oven and that is going to cook 
for the first, we're gonna, we're gonna keep on looking at these because we definitely don't want them to burn. So now these go into the oven and I set my timer for 15 minutes. That's the first timer that you wanna set, 15 minutes, yeah? And after 15 minutes, so I'll just put this to the side. After, oh, after, I can show you this. After 15 minutes, what you then want to do is you want to turn your tray so it browns nice and evenly. Most definitely do that, because I do find that most ovens have hot spots and cold spots. So even with the fan going, you want to turn your tray after 15 minutes, just give it, give it a turn, just to make sure that the edges are browning up evenly, because what you're going to discover with these crackers is the edges will cook first. So after 15 minutes, you turn your tray. That's the first timer. The second timer that you set is for a further five minutes, yeah? And after five minutes, you take your tray out of the oven, and what you want to do is you want to crack off the edges, which is what I've done here. So, so far, I'll, oh, I'll show you again. So far, imagine these have been in the oven for 20 minutes. Now, 15 minutes, and then we turn five minutes longer. And what you're gonna find, you see these edges here, they're already gonna be cooked, whereas the middle part needs a bit longer. So what I do after, um, after 20 minutes is I actually take my knife, take this out of the oven, take my knife, and I separate the edges from the middle pit, bit, which won't be as cooked, and I take them out and put them on a wire rack. So this is all my, these are all my edges after 20 minutes of cooking. And if I were to leave those on, they would burn, which you don't. You don't want to burn your crackers, that would just be terrible. So after 20 minutes in total cooking time, you want to just remove the edges, put them onto a wire rack, and obviously you've saved them from burning and being all bitter and nasty. So that's 20 minutes. You then put your tray back into the oven for a further five minutes. So this is now being 25 minutes in total. And what will then happen is the middle will cook evenly. So this is after 25 minutes in the oven. Your oven may be a bit different to mine, so keep an eye on it because you do not want these to burn because that would just be absolute blasphemy for the cheese. So you don't want that to happen. So after 25 minutes, you take it out of the oven. And this was the central part, as I was saying. Peel it back from your baking paper. And remember those scoring that I did? That now means that you get to do that with your crackers and break them up. Now these crackers um, need to be in an airtight container, most definitely. And when I mean airtight, I mean airtight. Just keep an eye on it because you don't want your crackers to get soggy. So um, store them once they've completely cooled down, store them in an airtight container and they will last, I even put them back in the fridge because I find that um, putting them back in the fridge helps them to last because once again, there's no preservatives in there, right? We've made this, it's all natural ingredients. So I like to store my baked goods in the fridge because there's no preservatives. They last a bit longer and you're looking at between, you know, four to five days. If you store them in an airtight container in the fridge, you get to have these amazing crackers. Now, what do they taste like? I'm gonna try it because Mmm, can you hear the crunch? Wow, wow. They literally taste, they do. <laughs> Cheddar flavored. Oh, someone's coming. Someone wants us. Oh, here we go. There you go. You're welcome, sir. Come again anytime. Mm. They taste like shapes, cheddars. <laughs> but they're way better for you because there's literally what? One, two, three, four, five ingredients five ingredients, you know, not including salt. Now, by the way, if you are making these for grown-ups and you wanna obviously add a bit more Parmesan cheese, so a sharper, more vibrant type of cheese, I'm gonna have another one. If you wanna do that, 100%, another thing you can do if these are, are going for adults. Mmm, oh, they're so good. Oh, I got so excited I turned on my cooktop. <laughs> if you wanna um, just, slightly alter the flavor again and really really highlight the cheese a herb that you can use which is literally a marriage made in heaven when it comes to cheese is a couple of teaspoons of dried tarragon in here will create the most amazing amazing flavor as well so i would suggest just a little bit of dried tarragon it's better than thyme it's better than than rosemary literally dried tarragon in these crackers is Phenomenal. So there you go. They're Moorish. I give them to you with a little bit of a warning. 
They're really delicious, they're really Moorish, and they're hard to turn away from because they taste so good. Kids, adults, everyone loves them. But you know, just remember, not only are you looking after the fact that these are gluten-free, which is wonderful, um, these are also sugar-free, which is fantastic, they're grain-free, um, but they're real, and nut-free of course, but the really amazing thing is those wonderful health benefits when you choose the right type of cheeses. So we're going to go for hard cheeses, Gouda, Emmentaler, um, Edam is another great cheese, Cheddar of course, Parmesan cheese, even Pecorino cheese is fantastic. It's lovely and sharp like a really good Parmesan cheese. But if you do that, you decide on what quantities of cheeses that you use to make your cheese crackers absolutely delicious. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that class. I cannot wait to see all your cheese crackers being shared on our private page, our private group, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen Family. If you haven't joined us on our group, come on over. It's free to join and we're there to support you through your health and wellness journey. So nice to see you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and wherever you are in the world, please stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you next week for Mexican week or week in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. All right, guys, take